South Africa recently gazetted its critical skills list for purposes of immigration. It identifies a total of 101 jobs that should give qualified foreigners a fast track to a working visa or permanent residence in the country. Home Affairs has been closing immigration loopholes amid anti-foreigner rhetoric and threats against businesses that employ foreigners. Also, jobs on the list are supposed to be critical to national objectives. We're joined now by Labour lawyer Michael Bagram. Michael, good evening and thank you so much for your time. So, when you just look at this list of, this updated list of uh, critical skills um, and the talk that we've had out of the Home Affairs Office that they are looking to implement job reservation of sorts, particularly in the low-skilled areas, do you think that those will be able to effectively solve the employment issues that have been raised by South Africans about why they feel excluded from the market? Uh, absolutely not. Um, unfortunately, uh, people are looking at this as some sort of panacea when government actually isn't doing its job. We need to create jobs in South Africa, not exclude people with specific skills. I understand that people feel hard sore when they see foreigners working in low-skilled jobs, and that has nothing to do with the, the list itself. Um, I think we've got less than 2.5% of our workforce is foreign foreign workers. The real problem with this list is that unfortunately they're leaving out some skills that are desperately needed. Uh, for instance, the whole medical field is completely left out um, of the list. If you have a look at the list and they're having a perfect opportunity to start looking at what we really need in this country and to actually bring those in as critical skills. Doctors, nurses, um, medical professionals of all sorts uh, government itself um, has brought in, and they keep bringing in, Cuban doctors and Cuban medical professionals at enormous cost, and now they leave it off the list completely. Now, we haven't updated this list for about at least seven years now, and now they've come forward and they've got a list, and I'm not sure who put some intelligence into this. The other thing we need to understand is that we have a constitution and a Labor Relations Act in South Africa. Now, that Labor Relations Act does not allow you to retrench someone to make way for a local. It doesn't allow you to do that. So it is not going to cure anything. It's, I understand that countries around the world do have critical skills lists. I understand that there is some sort of job re reservation uh, allowed around the world. But that doesn't cure a problem. We've got a problem with almost 50% unemployment in South Africa. And to start looking at this as some sort of panacea, that 2.5%, it doesn't make any sense at all. All it does, it creates xenophobic reaction. And unfortunately, you can understand how people are behaving. They can't find a job. They hear, they hear that a foreign national has taken your job, and so you react really badly. And our government is playing into the xenophobic fear, and it's wrong. Michael, I want us to talk about something else that is mm -hmm. now going to be looked at by the department, and it's about um, South African businesses. So we know that for multinational organizations or foreign-owned companies that want to operate in the country, there's been this there's the 60-40 split in terms of who these companies should employ. Now, no such regulation actually exists for South African companies. And government seems to want to be able to change that. Uh, let's talk about what the implications of having, let's say, whether they're going to be quotas or we're not really sure exactly what that legislation will look like, but it seeks to effectively put a limit on the number of foreign nationals that South African companies can employ. Again, and I understand that the Minister of Depart Department of Employment and Labor, the Minister of Employment and Labor, is speaking about that. Um, and yes, we already have that in place for foreign-owned companies on the 60-40 split, 60% 60 South African, 40% foreign. Again, this is social engineering. And again, this is looking to try and cure a problem where that's not going to cure the problem. Um, as you know, 
Um, and I said that earlier on, it's such a small percentage of foreign workers that we have in our workforce, it doesn't even got, take the cream off the, off the top of employment at all. Um, and, of course, this social engineering means that if they bring in, like the quota, for instance, because let's not call it any fancy word, it is a quota, um, if you bring that in, all you're trying to do is you're trying to push businesses to enforce them to take South Africans, regardless of whether they have the right skills or the right um, wherewithal to be able to run the business. We know what's happening to the business community in South Africa. The business community is shrinking, uh, and people are looking for ways and means of growing their businesses without employment. So we've got jobless growth in this country, and we can't afford that. We want people to have jobs. And my experience has been, and even with small companies, that for every skilled foreigner that you have, you are able to bring in two or three South Africans to be able to work with that skilled foreigner and to learn those skills. We've got a problem with productivity in this country. We're the lowest in the world. So you can't match quotas with no productivity. It doesn't work. And again, that is social engineering. Um, I'm not sure why they're looking for these outside type cures when the real problem is unemployment and it doesn't cure unemployment by saying we're going to bring in quotas the business community is merely going to react by computerizing mechanizing outsourcing all that sort of reaction that you always see from a business community to be able to have had their productivity built up it doesn't help at all to have quotas of course, when one listens to what the ministers, both of Labour and Home Affairs, are indicating is that there are legitimate concerns that are raised by South Africans about non-nationals who are employed, particularly in low-skilled areas where uh, the, the narrative is often that, you know, they are employed for their labour. Uh, employers are not following uh, the country's labor processes. They're not actually, you know, paying them even minimum wage in some instances. And because they're vulnerable groups, they're easier to take advantage of. So even problems like that, Michael, that emanate from these hiring patterns, how can those be worked on? Well, it's quite simple. First of all, we need Home Affairs to do its job and not have a porous fence at our borders so that people can just walk in. That's the first problem, and we need to do that properly. It doesn't cure because the borders are wide open. It, you can't cure it when you try and stop people from getting jobs. That's the first problem. The second problem is that we need the Department of Home, Home Affairs to speak to the Department of Employment and Labor and say, implement your laws. If people are not paying the minimum wage, then we need to fine employers. We need to jail employers. We need to actually work on them. We need more inspectors from the Department of Employment and Labor to actually work on it. It's not a cure to say, well, we're not going to let you have foreigners, because what they'll do then is they'll merely implement local workers coming in and earning under the minimum wages. Again, that's not acceptable. It's illegal. So we need to actually, we've got the laws. Let's implement the laws. Let's pursue them and police the business community. It's somehow... They're trying to say, well, we can't police the business community. We don't have the inspectors, so we're now going to implement more laws. But if you don't have the inspectors, it doesn't matter what law you bring in. It, it, it stands to reason that if you don't have enough inspectors to make sure that you've got the minimum wage properly policed, how are you going to get locals uh, properly policed? It, it doesn't make any sense at all. And we're seeing this all over the country. You're absolutely right. Locals... Are not, some are not getting jobs because you can bring in a foreigner at half the price at below the minimum wage. That foreigner is being badly treated because they're desperate for a job. But all we need now is an inspector to go into the businesses. The trade unions are very active in South Africa. They must speak up and they must ensure that the department brings inspectors to the workplace, make sure that we have all the health and safety regulations implemented and the minimum wage. The minimum wage is to break that as a criminal offense. And if you don't absolutely implement the minimum wage, then we must start finding employers using that money to employ more inspectors. Um, it's a vicious circle to bring more and more fancy laws when you can't implement the, the laws that you've got anyway. 
doesn't make any sense again.